Hello and welcome to this PTE AV Studio video where the subject is monochrome to colour. My name's Barry Beckham. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you're a YouTube viewer and don't forget you can download this video and many more from my website. This technique is more visually attractive within audiovisual than some of the others but it demands a little thought and some attention to detail. And a very good place to start is to ask ourselves, why are we considering this technique? Isn't it to draw attention to a particularly good image and boost the appeal of our audio visual? And the way we know it's a good image is that it's going to work very well in both black and white and color. Some colour images just don't convert to grayscale in a way that's visually attractive. Yet what we're about to do is to draw attention to both the monochrome and the colour versions of one image, displaying it effectively twice. So firstly, it means the image we choose has got to be a really good one. Both the monochrome and the colour version must be able to stand alone on their own merits. If they can't, then we must choose another image. Now I'm a great believer in that phrase, never say never, because there will always be someone who successfully bucks a trend. But here I think I'll nail my colours to the mast and say, don't create a whole audio visual based on images fading from monochrome to colour. It's boring, even if your images are good ones. So use this technique sparingly, and this really is an example of when less is actually more. If we use the technique once or twice in a sequence, that's enough, perhaps at the start and the end. So now we come to the question of how do we create these effects? Well, there's a couple of ways. We can create two identical images in programs like Photoshop or Lightroom, one colour and one black and white. Then we can place them into our slide list or the timeline in AV Studio. Now the advantage of this method is that we have very easy control of the slide duration of each image and also the length of the transition. It's probably the easiest way to synchronize this technique with our soundtrack. But it also allows us to use other transition styles, and one of those could be shapes. Shapes allows us to position the transition starting or ending in a location of our choice. Now here we can see that the change from monochrome to color starts from an important part of the picture, that section of the cathedral roof down in the bottom right. And we're going to move straight on to the other example, which just does exactly the same thing, but in the other direction. Another method is to use the objects and animation screen with keyframes in AV Studio to determine the transition from mono to color. With this method, we can't use the shapes or other transition styles because they're not available to us in this particular screen. But as you can see here, we can animate the image at the same time that it's changing from mono to color. So a gentle zoom or a pan plus a fade to color is possible. Within the objects and animation screen, we can still use two separate images if you'd rather convert them to monochrome in your image editor. Or we can use the color correction options in PTE AV Studio. Choices, choices, eh? So let's take a look at what I think is the easiest option first. We're in the main screen of AV Studio. I'm going to right click in the slide list down at the bottom and just put in a blank. And then I'm going to drag down or I'll double click the black and white version of my sailboats, the color, 
the black and white tractor and the colour. We could use, I suppose, the merging of the monochrome to the colour to also incorporate a title to our sequence. That may not be a bad idea. But let's concentrate here on the monochrome to colour. I'm going to go down to the bottom right of my screen to the timeline. I'm going to make one or two changes here. I'll drop the transition length of the blank. I'll drag this image back so we get a couple of seconds before the image appears on screen. How long we have this image on screen is going to depend if we're going to include a title or not. But what I'm going to do is leave about three seconds. Let's move these out of the way for the moment. And then I'll put a nice long fade just so we get a feel for what we've achieved here. Let me make this screen a bit bigger so you can see the image nice and large in the mini player. And I'll put my cursor back at the start and press play. So there's the monochrome which could given time have a title in place and then a very gentle slow transition to colour. And of course we can stop this at any time and we can make changes. Let's put the cursor back to that position and now we've got a very quick change to colour. It's all going to be personal and it's going to be driven somewhat by the soundtrack you're using. Now the other advantage to using this method is we can select the colour image. Let me make that transition a bit longer again. We can go to our slide options down at the bottom left and we can choose any one of these to take the place of the fade we've currently got selected. So we could use something like shapes and it was shapes I was saying that we can determine exactly where the shape appears. Let me take the thickness of the smoothing line off here and if you look at the mini player just above or the thumbnail now you get a good idea of exactly what's happening. We're working to the centre here. We can work from the centre. But using the controls down here we can slide that circle to any position on the image and of course we've got a couple of other shapes too. But with an image like this, perhaps another option would be the gates. So if we select gates, we could decide to have the colour coming from the middle. So here you can see by default it's coming from the outer edges inwards. But given that we've got a landscape, I'm going to suggest either this one from the outside inwards and we get a good idea of the effect with the thumbnail or from the centre out. Again, as I say many times, it's all going to be personal. Let me put my cursor in that position, press play on the mini player, and we'll just take a look at that. We don't get these options when we're working in the objects and animation screen, and that's where we're going to go next. So here in the objects and animation screen, we're going to apply the technique to just one color image. We'll do all of the conversion to monochrome within PTE AV Studio. An image editor is not necessary for the conversion and we can animate the image too. This Pelican image has about a 15 second slide duration because we effectively see it for twice the normal duration and we're going to need to create the mono to colour. The benefit we have here is we can animate the image as well as create the mono to colour. Now I think one of the easiest ways to do this is to use a frame to control the animation and keyframes on this pelican image to control the mono to colour. So let's start by creating that frame. I need to remove the selection from the pelican. You can see the bounding box around the outside edge of the large thumbnail or the image there. And you can see the pelicans highlighted in the bottom right corner. Just click anywhere outside of that and you can see we've deselected it. I can then right click and choose to add a frame. If I go to the properties section of this window, I can choose to rename that frame. 
So we could say something like zoom and pan, just as a reminder to what we're about to do. But what we also need to do here is we need to make the pelican a child of the frame, which is the parent. Very easy to do. If we select the pelican, I'm going to right click and choose cut. Don't worry, we're not going to lose anything. Then with the frame selected, if I right click again and choose paste, everything comes back where we left it, but it's slightly changed because now the frame here is the parent. So we can animate the parent and because the pelican is a child of the parent, the pelican will automatically take on the movement of, in our case, the frame. So let's select the frame and we'll set that up first. Let me go back to the top of the screen to the animation tab because we're going to need those. But then to create the second keyframe, I'm going to use the shortcut key, which is the insert key on the keyboard. And there you can see the keyframe has been created. If I select it, what I need to do is to go up to my zoom, turn it on, click and drag over the X to decide how much zoom I actually want. Well, as I start to zoom in, you'll notice that I lose the head of the top pelican. So I've got a couple of choices. I could back off, but I could also use a little bit of pan. So if I select that and the Y, I can bring that down. So if we go over to the left hand side and click and press play, what we've just set up is just that zoom and the pan. But that looks pretty good. So once this comes to an end, I can go to the bottom right corner once again. I can select my pelican and now we can set up that change from mono to color. We're going to need a second keyframe, so I'm going to use that insert key to create that. What we can do with these two keyframes is to move them around the timeline with click and drag because it's between these two keyframes which is going to determine how fast or slow the change from monochrome to color is. And as we're going to start with the monochrome, we need to select the first of these two keyframes and we need to go over to the right hand side to our color correction. If I add a filter and I choose the hue and saturation as an example, let me just drag this box down a little bit. I'm going to put my cursor over the saturation and if I drag to the left, I can move the setting to minus 100 and you see the effect of that. Now, sometimes when we make a change from color to monochrome, it doesn't always look quite as nice as we'd like. Sometimes we have to use a second filter. So I can go back to my filters, click add, so if I wanted to add a little brightness and contrast, I can do that as well. For example, if I go to the brightness and click and drag to the right, you can see the image just lightening up a little bit. And if I wanted to add a little bit of contrast, I can do that too. We can tuck these away once we're done. But all we need to do now is to go back to the start, put the cursor back at the start and press play. And now we've got the zoom and the pan working. And from that keyframe to the next, we're going to see it move into glorious color. Well, 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 nothing seems to have happened. This is what I was talking about earlier on. All we need to do here is tick this box, go to the color correction because they're turned off. So what that effectively does is to say to, OK, apply the monochrome at that keyframe, but ignore any change at this one. And by ticking the box, we're saying, no, we're quite ready to have the image go from monochrome to color between those two points. So let's have another go and everything's going to be fine. The zoom, the pan, and the mono to color. And of course, the closer those two keyframes are, the quicker the change to the color is going to be, 
the further they're apart, it's going to take quite a long time. And it's great that we can have the zoom and pan connected to the frame. So if we did need to add more slide duration as we was putting our slideshow together, it's not going to impact on the Pelican going from monochrome to color. Now, as you can see by the changes on screen, what I've done to my little demo here is to add a piece of music. And in the objects and animation screen, we can actually see the WAV file, which you can see here, by going to the tools down at the bottom right and just turning them on. And they can be very useful because when we're lining up keyframes with peaks of the music, we can certainly see a peak here. So we could maybe want that keyframe moved to that point. This one could be moved to this one or even back here. Again, lots of personal preference, but you can see how sometimes having the waveform in that position can help us line things up. Now with the spinning round of the screen, what I've done here is exactly what we've just done with a frame. But if I wanted to use a monochrome image I'd created in an image editor, you can see exactly what I've set up on the right hand side. The track to mono takes the place of the frame we used earlier. So it's the track to mono, if I select it, which controls the zoom and the pan from this keyframe to this keyframe. But when we go and select the track to color, it's the two keyframes here that control the color from mono to here to color here. So if we just take a quick look at that to finish, we've got a number of different ways we can create this. One of them we can incorporate animation as well as the mono to color. And the other way we can take advantage of the many transitions this software gives us. Now I hope you'll agree that this technique going from monochrome to color does have a fair degree of charm. Whether we're going to use the different transition styles in PTAB Studio or we're going to use the objects and animation screen and include animation too. Either way it does create quite an attractive effect. The one thing we need to do is not to overdo things. I'll see you next time.